I'm Eduardo Lopez Moreno, Head of Research and Capacity Development within UN Habitat. Today we are going to talk about the City Prosperity Initiative. Why to talk about prosperity, especially in a period of crisis, crisis of social or political, of economic, even in some places of hunger. Prosperity, as UN Habitat has conceptualized this in the State of the World Cities report, is a new vision, is a new approach to development. One that wants to integrate in a more holistic manner all the dimensions of development and prosperity in a human-based perspective. We have, by producing this report, we have noticed that many cities immediately after have requested us help us to look at our index, where we are in the path of prosperity, how we are measuring in comparison with other cities, in comparison with our own development. And then UN Habitat decided, after hearing all these demands, to launch worldwide the City Prosperity Initiative. This initiative pretends to look, as I said, how cities could look at development in a more integrated manner, how they can respond to welfare and benefits of their citizens, but for all citizens, not only for one or for few that are benefiting today in development. We wanted to look at the future of the world and to see if we can capture the essence of sustainable development and to measure this. That's why the City Prosperity Initiative was launched. This initiative is planning to connect in a simple continuum the data production to transform this data into knowledge and information, and later on into policy decisions. But in policy decisions that we can measure, that we can tell the people and mayors can tell also to the political and technical audience that they can set for the first time baselines, targets, and measurement tools. This is what the City Prosperity Initiative is planning to do. Why this initiative was born? And I think uh, in this unique perspective of our organization to look at different parts of the world, we have identified some general problems. These commonalities are four or five, and I would like to mention them. Number one, and quick, is that uh, today's cities in the world, from the physical point of view, have grown at least three times more than their demographic needs. This growth represents, of course, problems of environmental, of of uh, climate, of energy use, and it represents serious difficulties to bring to the inhabitants living in, in very far away peripheries the necessary public and private goods that they require for living. Cities, as they are growing, they have generated extreme inequalities, social economic inequalities, opportunities, benefits of development are not shared in, in these cities. Third, cities have created serious distortions in the form and functions. Cities are reducing dramatically densities. They are reducing the possibility of benefiting from economies of scale and agglomeration, which are fundamental for job generation, for productivity, but also for better quality of life. Cities are affecting the environment. As they are growing in these endless peripheries, they are consuming biodiversity, nature, in a way that is not sustainable. And also, the last point, the fight important one, cities are forgetting that they have intangible values. Collectivity, identity, solidarity, fundamental aspects for the city to be better governed. The City Prosperity Initiative is therefore designed in a way, and if you can see in this slide, we would like to, to, in a metaphoric way, tell decision makers, tell mayors that they can steer development. They can look in which moment to stop, in others how to change the direction, how to change the pace, the pace of the city in terms of growth. In order to do that, this metaphoric uh, wheel of prosperity has been designed using five important integrated dimensions of prosperity. These dimensions, are helping cities to identify where they are in the prosperity path. Some cities, unfortunately, are just beginning the process, are weak in their sustainability factors, 
and some of them are defaulting in these dimensions and indicators. Others are in the medium, and others are more strong. UN Habitat, what we have done, and we are, we are planning to do with cities that are joining already this initiative, is to help them to measure which is the index of the city. An index that can be measured at two levels. One, that we call basic, we can create a platform of comparability among cities. And the second, which is extremely important for a policy dialogue, is an index that is telling us which are the specificities, which are the contextual needs of the cities that can help us to identify opportunities and also challenges of the city. From there, we are going working with the decision makers and different stakeholders to design in a collective manner, in a participatory way, an action plan. An action plan that derives very clearly policy interventions, specific actions that can help not only to improve in one of the spokes of prosperity, but in a more integrated manner in all of them. We will also assist them, some cities that are committed. This, after all, is a compact. It's a way of looking together how to create responsibilities for sustainable development. If we can get some financial assistance for these cities to improve these technical uh, actions that we have identified together. As you can see also in this important and simple slide, we have translated the wheel of prosperity into a pentagon, a sort of a spider uh, graphic that is telling us in the five dimensions of prosperity, by the way, dimensions that were not only selected by UN Habitat, uh, our organization working with partners have uh, analyzed and surveyed 54 cities in the world. We have asked normal citizens, what is for them prosperity? How a prosperous city should look like? And we were very interested to notice that from Africa to Asia, to Latin America and the developed world, people were looking at prosperity in the same way. A prosperous city is a city that, that is productive, that generates jobs, that create economic dynamism. But it's also a city that has infrastructure, that has good basic infrastructure, that has good connectivity, that has ICT and other things that the modern life, the 21st century life requires. But a city also, in order to be prosperous, requires quality of life. Quality of life means cities where you can walk, where you can feel secure, where you have recreation areas and, and public and green areas. It's a place where you can be granted the right to live in the city with all the benefits that it represents. But also people told us, and this is a very important dimension of prosperity, that prosperity should not be only for a privileged few. Prosperity should be granted, should be given to all inhabitants in the city. And the last dimension, as important as the other, is that cities should be environmentally sustainable. We need to create cities that future generations will live there better than we are today. And the prosperity dimension in this, in this Pentagon would tell us, for instance, you have the city of Vienna that in the first analysis of cities came out with the highest ranking in the prosperity path, meaning that close to the Pentagon, cities with 1.1 will represent high prosperity and with zero, close to the vertices of the Pentagon, would represent that they have very low levels of prosperity. And you will see, for instance, Mexico City that is performing well in some of the dimensions like infrastructure or quality of life, but is defaulting in productivity and especially in equity. Another example here, just to illustrate this, we have Johannesburg, today what, the most unequal city in the world, which is highly penalized in the equity dimension. This, in this dialogue, in this discussion, as we already have been doing with different local authorities and with different stakeholders, will help us to visualize where to intervene, but not in a, only one dimension. The way that we would like to intervene is to say, look, you are bad in equity, your city is not performing well in productivity, but the actions that we would like to suggest for you to do are going to have positive repercussions in the other dimensions of prosperity. Like this, we will make sure that from now on, cities can measure that they are evolving over time in a more integrated manner. This is what the City Prosperity Initiative is doing. We are hoping that around 300 cities in the next year 
will join this initiative. Today we have already 20 that subscribe and are part of the initiative. And UN Habitat, working with them, will offer to these cities a certain number of benefits. But we also hope cities will commit to do what it is decided to do through this continuum between data, analysis, knowledge, and policy decisions. We are expecting to provide technical support in a range of different things. For instance, and obviously, we will start with a measurement tool to help cities to identify where they are in the city prosperity index. After that, we will do a, a simple institutional analysis, which part of the, of the institutions from the very local neighborhood level up to the national level are necessary to improve or to strengthen in order to respond better to the prosperity demands. After that, we will develop some strategies for improvement, which will translate in specific action plans. It's action plans that are brought from consensus. And from there, we will do something very innovative. We will try to look at policy simulations, which means how we can, from the very beginning, before starting the implementations of the actions, to look at the likelihood of the impact of these actions. Any action that we will decide, we can measure at the beginning how they are going to impact the different dimensions of prosperity. And once implemented, we will come back to a new measurement. And like this, we will provide to the city the possibility, for the first time in many cities of today's world, that they can connect knowledge to decision making. We will do some prospective analysis. Cities are not static. They are moving over time. They are changing, some, some of them for good or others for less good. We would like to do some level of prospective analysis to see how to harness the benefits of development, regional development for this future. Finally, we will help them to support decision making. Where we are in this process and how we move in the road of, of prosperity path with this initiative. Five steps or six that are needed for the cities. Number one, as I said, we will look at the specificity of the city. What the city requires, how the city would integrate some of the comparative advantages, some of the historical, some of the intangible aspects that the city requires to be part of the prosperity path. We will measure this, we will set up together indicators, and from there, we will move to the second level, which is an action plan. The action plan is a simple diagnostic based on the, on the prosperity index, but a diagnosis that translates into recommendations and a critical path of development. From there, and this is very important, cities, they need to understand that other parts of the world are doing things well. We need to capture the essence of these ingredients of success. And this we will do it through, through a program of best practices. Our agency, UN Habitat, has more than 12,000 entries of best practices that we would like to connect to the City Prosperity Initiative and to tell cities, look, this initiative in this part of the world, which is very close to what you need, work well. Of course, you need to adjust, you need to adapt this to your own reality, but we can make this creative connection in order to improve in this. The, the fourth element of, of the City Prosperity Initiative is that we are going to derive or we are going to design together some sustainable actions, so sustainable solutions, things that the city requires in order to improve targets, solutions, that we can measure. And finally, in order to close this loop, we are going to look at the monitoring. After one year, we are expecting that cities can, can decide in this evaluation whether they are in the, in the correct path, if there is a need of some changes, some adjustments, or to redefine some of the policy interventions. Let me conclude by saying that we have already some interesting advancement and success in the initiative. Mexico, we have more than 35 cities that have requested to join the initiative. 15 have already subscribed this agreement or compact. And some of them are moving in the prosperity path in different manners. We have other countries, for instance, the government of Colombia, uh, through the Development Bank, has decided to support 15 cities and to produce the state of the Colombian city report using the prosperity initiative and the prosperity index. From there, we have had, and this is a very positive outcome, uh, several countries and cities requesting this, Iran, Egypt, Angola, uh, and, and many other countries, Pakistan, 
and we are expecting to have more African cities and countries joining the initiative. We have already one case in which we move from the metric, the measurement, to the policy dialogue, and we have set up some specific technical interventions. This is the case of Guadalajara in Mexico, where based on all this process with the government, we have designed what we call a, a, a project for a most prosperous cities, looking at two specific things. How city can address and look at the comparative advantages that the, the region offer, how they can look at the opportunities, harness all these, look at some of the deficits and challenges, and to produce a new model of metropolitan development. We have also working with them uh, the, 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 a plan to improve the sustainability, uh, I would say mobility, urban development of the city, specifically connecting, and we hope we will do this in a very creative manner, transport to mobility, to accessibility in terms of space. This just to illustrate that the city prosperity is an excellent continuum, is a dialogue, is a way of looking how cities can be more prosperous in the future, but prosperous in this perspective of human habitat, which is an integrated, holistic, shared view of development. Thank you.